the part of which is concerned gas flaring. So we got their input, that the input of the Ministry of Petroleum Resources and other stakeholders too, to ensure that um, uh, the law, which has been known, the process has been on for almost 17 years, is concluded, you know, before the end of our term mm. uh, in this, to, to address this. But in the main, this commercialization policy, the implementation is very key because my committee and the committee on gas and upstream were taken through by the Honorable Minister of State, Ibe Kachiko, in this uh, policy, the seven win, mm. uh, quick win with uh, number three, you know, concern this, uh, this uh, establishment of this uh, policy, mm. commercialization of the gas uh, flare mm. in the, the, the Nigeria petroleum industry. You know, somebody, so, yeah, you, you just talked about petroleum industry, you know, mm -hmm. and, and the, the concern of a lot of uh, oil and gas watchers, you know, are that we haven't, you know, the petroleum industry governance bill stay pending. Still pending, isn't it? For assent. For assent. It's, it's still not law. Yes. So, and that is what is required to, of course, uh, provide, you know, the incentives and, you know, spur on these, uh, these uh, uh, measures. So, so, uh, so, no. Uh, uh, that, yes. That's uh, okay. Yeah, if maybe after. Okay, let, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry mm -hmm. let the Honorable, yes, before yeah. you come in. Uh, it was passed speedily by us, the Senate National Assembly, and sent to Mr. President where he uh, came, sent it back for, uh, you know, because of some concern, and we have addressed that concern. So every time, any time from now, we believe it to be, it will be signed into law. So I, I, I do not have any fear, you know, that about the governor's bill. You know, this is a gamut of interest is involved in this matter, and that is why it has not been possible you know, for all the time. But now, all these interests have been harmonized. And I, the, the, the Senate President and uh, the Speaker have made, taken it as a challenge that this industry is too important to our economy than to toy with it because of conflict of interest. Mm. So the, 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 the reality is that it is still not law in this country. That's the Petroleum Industry Governance Bill. It's still not law. Okay. Your target is 2020. That's just approximately two years yeah, from two now. Two years from now. Yes. So is, is, is that feasible? I, which is why I want to make yes. some, uh, some, some form of, give you some information mm. as opposed to the Petroleum Industry Governance Bill. So the Petroleum Industry Governance Bill will not affect um, the timeline which the federal government has committed to 2020 to eliminate gas flare to as low as reasonably practicable. So this is it. Mm. There is an existing Petroleum Act. Yes. So if you look at Section 9 and Section 11 of the Petroleum Act, it empowers the Petroleum Minister in the interest of the public to come up with regulations. And paragraph 35B, first schedule one of that Petroleum Act says, mm. federal government can take flares at no cost and without payment of royalty. So kudos and some credit to the crafters of this Petroleum Act. Mm. Apparently they know that there will come a time that over time, if uh, oil producing companies keep shifting the goalposts, government will mm -hmm. step in. And that's, this, that's the intervention we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Government has stepped in to say, okay, I'm going to make this provision now to say all oil companies, cease and disease, or whatever you're doing with the gas, we're taking it and we're giving it to competent third parties. And that's what the NGSCP is all about. Third parties now, uh, gas licenses? Competent third parties that have that, 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 that they have technical uh, background, they have the financial background, and they have proven project development experience, and they have um, uh, technologies that are in commercial applications. So we don't want them to bring in technology that is just um, uh, uh, no care, no pay kind of technology. This must be proven, they must be tested in other parts of the world. And we have closed about 40 of them that we've scrubbed with the World Bank that's on the NGFCP website. So for those, for, for, for purpose of our li listeners, if you go to uh, www... You, you're gonna, we're going to give you an invoice if you say that. Okay. <laughs> I thought we're trying to enlighten the public to know <laughs> what the government is doing in that regard. So, so, so that is it. So we're, we're, so we're inviting competent third parties mm -hmm. to take this gas uh, this, that is heated up and flared and convert them to market products. 
and then sell them at their own price. Now, this is what will happen. We will now pass them through competitive bidding process. Again, going by the body language of Mr. President to show transparency and demonstrate openness. Mm -hmm. Everybody will compete competitively and we'll come up with a set of criteria to see if those that are serious and of course you will meet up the requirement. Why we're doing this is that we're introducing third parties that to some extent will make sure that they match with the standards of the exploration and production companies and of course meet up with the guidelines and standards of the Department what, of Petroleum this, Resources. These third parties, I'd like you to put a name. Yes. Are they off takers? So these are investors. Mm -hmm. So when they, so what these investors, uh, third party will do is that they will now come up with the technology mm -hmm. and harness the flag. So the end product will not go to off takers. Okay. The buyers. Okay. I, I, I still don't understand. I'm, I'm, my understanding is, are we doing the same, you know, uh, strategy adopted in power privatization, where you have, of course, uh, the discos and the jenkos. Well, you can you can say that more like it. it so, but what, what these other party investors mm -hmm. and technology providers are doing that they are coming with their own funds. And by the way, we 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 so uh, in, you you ask it's a question. Isn't that the same way we went? Mm, and yeah. 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 That was the that same was, way we went with the discos. That was where we went. We yeah. know we we generate. We now give it to transmission, transmission now give it to uh, yes, Jenko, I mean, uh, uh, the distributor. So you stop by yeah. and taking flare gas now? Now this one we take flare gas, flare gas and now wasted. sell it to So it's like, it's like waste to weld. So no. that waste, instead of wasting we it, had we had problem. Nested, we're using different technologies. So those technologies, at the end mm. of the day, what these investors will come up with will be liquefied petroleum gas, compressed natural gas, mm. chemicals, fertilizers, Including um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, other other petrochemicals for plastics. What happens where they fail? Because again, so if we use if we follow the template of in so power. So if, if you allow me, you know you you you, you, you yeah. instructed me what I was saying. So I'm trying to give you a background of the no. DNA of the yes, NGFCP. We, we need to be fast. Yes, that is that, going. so you, you, uh, that's what I was trying to work, work to give give us. So what what we now did was we now came up with a new regulation, which is why I said that the PIGB would not impact on the gas flare out timeline. We came up with a new regulation called the Flare Gas Prevention of Waste and Pollution Regulations 2018, made pursuant to the Petroleum Act and the Associated Gas Reinjection Act. Mm -hmm. And so what we now did with that regulation is to make sure that we look at it from a legal, technical, commercial, and quality from a developmental standpoint, that government is going to take this flare gas and give it to third parties. And then because to, to de-incentivize uh, producers, which is again captured in the national ga gas policy in, in, in chapter six, mm -hmm. that will increase the flare penalty. Mm -hmm. So the flare penalty up until uh, two and a half months, three months ago, mm -hmm. was uh, 10, 10 naira, naira per ton mm -hmm. of, uh, of gas. Mm -hmm. Now we've increased it to two dollars mm -hmm. per ton of for those producing more than 10,000 barrels of crude oil per mm -hmm. day. And 50 cent, for those producing less than 10,000 barrels of crude oil per day, per mm. thousand scope of gas. Mm. So let me pause you and bring in uh, okay. Anubo, okay. Yes, Kinaja. Yeah. What does that translate in terms of uh, uh, the, the economy and ending you know, gas flow? Well, if the policy uh, enunciated is uh, implemented and the law that we're talking about come to back it up, Nigeria is going to, Nigeria is going to end I guess we will earn more from the gas that is being fled. Now the gas, the gas is tapped by these uh, companies and now sold. There is value now added. I mean, there is value added now in the gas that we fled. And okay. then the economy, we benefit from it. Yes. Yes. In, in terms of the $2 increase, I mean, yes. fine in, penalty increase, what does that mean? I mean, the, the, the average Nigerian would want to know what does that translate for us. It's $2 you know, dollar times it, it, yes. than uh, so what, what, what per, per, means, per, per what, day. What, what that means is that what we're doing, again, like I did mention with the principle, is the intent is not to generate revenue for government. So the, the penalty is to de-incentivize producers from the continuous uh, gas flare practice. In how, the, how much is that? Mm -hmm. When you convert it, how much is that? So compared so compared to what, 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 what they're, they're making? By, the, <laughs> by last year um, data, Fever. it's around um, a billion US dollars, around 550, 570 uh, million US dollars. And that's a lot. Now, again, 
by the time this third party project come up to take this flare, the gas will dwindle, it will, it will decline. And then we'll have a baseline based as a result of the, regula the regulation to say producers must give us accurate flare data for us to give to third party investors because these investors will have they need to have investment grade data that they can take to the bank. They can't just bring their own money and then they're not getting this data. So the regulations capture that as well. Now, this is what, what will happen. By the time they are taking these flares from producers, they themselves should not flare. So the Department of Petroleum Resources came up with guidelines. So projects, when you're taking this flare, the intent is to stop flaring to as much as to as low as reasonably practicable. Mm -hmm. You should not flare. If you flare, this is how much you will pay. Mm -hmm. And by the way, to get to make sure that this program succeeds, we make the gas flare price zero point uh, twenty five cents mm -hmm. to attract investors. So, so we, we in the few minutes that we've got to go, I'd, I'd like you to address two issues mm -hmm. because uh, the same issues have uh, applied in, in the previous measures of uh, fine, in imposing fines. Of course, again, deductibles and alternative. Mm. Now, this measure, does it eliminate these issues of tax deductibles and having alternative? Well, the, the effort we are putting to the, 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 in the National Assembly, um, the new uh, law will prevent deductibles because it's like a punishment on the right and, and then ameliorating on the left. Okay. If you say pay 25 cents per cubic meter of your flare, and you say it's tax deductible, oh. and that is double jeopardy for the country oh. in terms of recovery, then there's no punishment. But like uh, he said, our own intention is that we should prevent gas flaring because apart from getting money from meat, money is for man, not man for money. Mm -hmm. The environmental impact of the gas flare is much more uh, than devastating. De devastating than the income that we earn from okay. punishment. Okay, so, we, so, so the so law will eliminate that. Okay, F finally, you talked about, uh, you, you, you have given parameters, you know, two dollar, uh, penalty per 1,000 uh, standard cubic meters oh, of gas flared. How do you determine that? Concerning the fact, of course, we, we, we hear cooked up you know, data from these oil companies. DPR doesn't even have uh, you know, the capacity to monitor you know, data that is, uh, that is given to them. What they have is outsourced. Very good. So, a very good question. And that is why I was trying to say that this regulation has addressed all of those. So the regulation now made it mandatory for producers to install meters. It's, a, it's an obligation for them to install meters, including the projects, these third parties that are coming, so that we have these records on ground and then it will not show the number of vol volumes, the gas that you flare, and then you make the payment. Mm -hmm. now, apart from that, it gives us a baseline to know our emission credit, what we can take to the carbon market. So what I've not told you was that from the outset, uh, NNPC, DPRO, Minister of Petroleum were on, on ground to design the NGFCP. Now, as we progress along at the implementation phase, NNPC's mm -hmm. Renewable Energy Department will collectivize the uh, flare data and take it to the mission credit mm -hmm. to do that. Then another agency of government will now sign the gases agreement with the project third parties. Mm -hmm. Now, the other bit, again, that we've done mm -hmm. to make sure yeah, that this yeah. program succeed is that we've come up with guidelines. And that's one good thing uh, the De Department of Petroleum Resources, DPRO, is doing. There are four key guidelines that will frame the implementation of the, of the regulations. Okay, let me bring uh, Kenaja, your last mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. Some have also suggested one way of ending gas flaring is by outsourcing monitoring of the you know, excess gas or excesses of uh, operators you know, mm -hmm. to local communities. Well, uh, outsourcing, yes, but... It must be access to those who have the means and the technology. Competence. And the competence, you see, where to place the meter itself is an issue. Like you said, there's always issues with quantity uh, of crude oil produced and transmitted. So in gas too, it's, it's, it's not unlikely that it can happen, but competence is, is, is the word word. So of, finally, of from, from both of you, in just one word, yeah. is this, the solution we're looking for is 2020 feasible to end gas flaring, or are we going to shift the goalpost again? It just should, as quickly. 
Okay. What? Wait, 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 wait. The way we've designed the program, yes, it's feasible, but I want, I need to mention that not all the gas fly locations will be harnessed. Thank you. Honorable I'm saying it should be, it should be feasible, but from our experience, it's a problem. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, I'd like to thank you for coming. Uh, it is a problem. It is feasible, but it is a problem. Implementation is key. Honorable Joseph Akinaja, Chairman, House Committee on Petroleum Resources Downstream, and Justice Lerifaka, Program Manager, Nigerian Gas Player Commercialization Program, NGFCP. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me for this discussion. Thank you. For this week on the edition, I am Claire Delabo Abdurazak. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.